everybody. Welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today, uh, we're going to finish putting Gord's Ferguson back together and get it cranked up. And uh, we'll see what happens. Should be fun. Let's get to work. Here we go now. It's all back together. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Heaven. Heavens. It can't be any worse than it was. Um, there's the key. There's the choke. Now, uh, Gord's battery is not too hot either. Guess we'll get my battery. All right. Um, our first test fire didn't go too good because the battery is shot. So I got one of mine here. Let's uh, see if we can crank this baby up. Ugh, it still doesn't want to run. Well, I got it running finally. Um, I found a couple of very strange things wrong with this. In the distributor here, for one thing, um, on a Ford, you'll have a, like a fiber, a big fiber washer that kind of covers the points before you put the cap on. On this plate one, it's uh, it's uh, an aluminum disc. Well, the aftermarket ignition parts that were in there, the, the, the little connector on the condenser stuck up far enough that it was just touching that. So I would take the distributor out, take it over to the bench, test everything electrically, and it was all fine. But as soon as I put it back in here and put that disc on, it would start shorting out the ignition. Who knew? Anyway, that took a <laughs> I found that by accident. And then what did I find out? I got it going, and it was still chop, 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 chop. Two bad plugs, again. So we have a set of NGK plugs and a set of auto lights. And right now it's got two auto lights and two NGKs because uh, two plugs in each set were dead. This thing eats spark plugs. I don't know what. They look fine, but uh, they're dead. So anyway, uh, I've got four plugs that work in it now. When it's sitting here idling, I can pull each wire off and the engine slows down and picks back up when you put it back on. It's got good throttle response. We're gonna get it outside in a minute and hopefully it's got power. Um, but we're gonna find out. I've got the air cleaner back on and hooked up as best as I can. Like I said, this is the wrong air cleaner for this, I'm pretty sure, because it's got this little nipple on here. That's for a TEA with the, with the positive crankcase ventilation. Anyway, whatever, it works. Um, now I've got our, remember we cleaned this up before, our air cleaner cup. I filled it up with fresh 1540 oil and we'll get that on there and get the little clamp on it. Oh, not as easy as it seems. All right, there we go. We got that on and tightened up. I have to apologize. I got into such a, a zone yesterday mussing around with this thing, trying to get it to run, that I um, I pretty much totally forgot to, to video anything. But anyway, I'll bring you a fast update. Got it all back together. Started it up. And no matter what I did, I just cannot get this thing to run right. So I said one last time, I'm going to put the replacement carburetor on it because it would never run at all with this thing on it. I put the replacement carburetor on it. Now all of a sudden, it starts right up. It idles as smooth as can be. But when you um, try to give it any throttle or ask it to make any power, it starts stumbling and the governor starts ring, 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 you know. So I said to myself, you know what? That could be a symptom of it, of it starving for fuel. So what we're going to do this morning is service the fuel bulb. First step in this is getting the, um, 
getting the fuel tank empty, which we did. I let it sit here all night with um, a hose into a bucket. Now we're going to uh, pull the fuel bulb down. I took the line off the back, made sure the thing is closed, and we just unscrew it with a, uh, usually an 11 16 wrench. Yeah, there you go. So you can see there, there is some junk there in the screen. We'll, uh, we'll get this thing cleaned out. I'm going to hold it upside down and open the valve and all the fuel should go back out into the jar. Now we undo this and we can get our bowl off. Oh golly, look at all the junk in there. Now we can clean up all this stuff and put it back together. I'll blow a bunch of air through this and see what comes out. Once it's all back together, we can put a little Teflon tape on it and put it back in. Now that's all back together, put some fuel in it. And let's see how it kind of flow we get into our jar. That's much better than we had before. Good. Another thing to check um, if you think you're starving for fuel is the vent on your tank. This I could see, uh, the Ferguson it uses this little hole and I could actually see light right through it so we know this is good. On the Ford, you've got a little dome welded to the, the tank up around here and there's a hole in the dome and a hole in the tank. Well, we're going to try and start this thing up and see what happens. Um, Gonna open the fuel. Let the carburetor fill up. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is just watch this for a second and make sure the float's not stuck. You'll see fuel start running out out of the, the carburetor inlet here, but um, looks like we're in decent shape. If you think your float's sticking, like if it starts flooding, just with the handle of a screwdriver, just give it a tap and that's usually enough to jar it. Um, we're gonna start with standard starting settings. So one and a half turns out on the idle mixture screw, so it's closed. Half, one and a half. And this guy, your power screw, we're gonna have it one and a quarter turns out. So one and a quarter. Alrighty, let's see what happens. take any throttle for some reason. Why does it do that? You just keep turning the power screw out until it doesn't do that no more. It's not picking up the mains. I got the power screw like right up.
what we've got now I've got the top of the old one with the bowl of the new one and it's running pretty good the idles a little choppy it was way smoother with the other one but it takes the throttle and it's got lots of power I just wish I could figure out why the other one won't pick up the mains I opened this one up again because I'm just curious. Um, I would really like the, this back on the, the new base because it idled so nice. Um, anyway, what I found out is I was trying to set the float level and you can see there it looks high. But what I realized is this has got one of these new style needle valves that's got this little spring-loaded ball in it. If you can see, here's an old-fashioned one. And this thing here, I was setting the float. I didn't realize I was pushing that ball down in. I don't know what that ball is even for. But it sure makes adjusting the float interesting. Anyway, I think I've got it adjusted up now. So we're going to put the, the new carburetor all back together and try it one more time. Failing that, we're just going to stick with what was working over there before the old top on the new bottom. So you can see I put the imported carburetor back together. Uh, I raised the float. It's all good. And still, when you try to pick up the mains, it starts surging. After hours and hours and hours of mussing around, I finally got this carburetor working. It's got a really nice idle. I can pull the throttle back and it picks up. The governor doesn't hunt because it's not going lean. And I'm going to show you what I found, what I finally, finally figured out. Oh, the land of almost fits struck again. Here's our original carburetor, and for the life of me, I still cannot figure out why this one will not work. But um, I just had it on there, and it again. Anyway, what I did find out was this thing here. Um, let me pull it out. This here is the main nozzle from the uh, aftermarket carburetor. And this is where um, it picks up the fuel for the mains. And you can see these little air bleeds down the side of it. The fuel goes in the bottom. It picks it up from the main jet. And these little holes in the side are let air into it to start partially atomizing it as it comes up the tube. And then it discharges out into the, into the booster. Well, all the little air bleeds are too small. So she wasn't able to pick up the fuel that she needed when it was trying to transfer from the idle circuit to the mains. That's why it would fall flat on its face, and the poor governor didn't know whether to, uh, you know, have a coronary or what. Oh, sorry, nice focus on the cheap phone. Other thing I noticed, that on our original carburetor, 
we've got four bowl vents. This vents into here, into this chamber here, and this, um, this is not the same carburetor, but, oh, here. And that, that, these connect to this passage, which connects to that, which is atmosphere. So, I drilled these four holes in the lid of that, uh, swapped the main nozzle from this one with the right size holes into that one, and she purrs like a kitten. Next thing I have to do, this is the fan belt that was on it, and um, first problem is we don't have the right pulley here on the water pump, but there's not much I can do about that. Uh, but you can see here where the governor has been rubbing on the alternator. The, the governor arm has been rubbing on the alternator, and that's not going to help things either. So we've got to find a belt. Hopefully I've got one just the, the next size up, so it'll be a half inch longer than that one. And uh, we could get the alternator just a tiny bit further away from the block. You don't want to go too far or it'll start hitting the drag link here when the axle pivots. Wow, this has gone all over the place, this video. I can't wait till I edit this sucker. This one's probably going to be a long one. You'll need some popcorn. Ah, we didn't need a new belt after all. This one's in good shape still. I just kind of gave the governor arm a little tweak and got it away from the alternator. There's a good three-eighths of an inch clearance in there now. That'll be just fine. All right, it's all back together. Now, this is the moment when you usually find out after you had it running apart five minutes ago and it ran good. Now that you put it all back together, it's not gonna run good. But hey, let's find out. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. Oh, that's how this thing should run. So here we are in the back 40. Our power screw needs to be adjusted properly. So when you can do this, and it, and it takes off pretty well like that, that's pretty good. I mean, you can open it up a little bit more. Until you just get rid of that stutter when you open the throttle. Right there. Now, if when you're using it, you see it puffing out black smoke when it hunkers down, or you'd smell it, you could close that screw back a little bit. Let's see what she's got. So it's just idling. We'll see if we can take off in fourth gear. And see if it'll drive up this little grade here at idle in fourth gear. Let's look at the exhaust. Don't see a bunch of black smoke. See if she can do it. No, not quite. That's asking a little much of it anyway. There, try it there. Easy on the clutch, and off we go. Look, see, just off idle, it handles it just fine. No black smoke. We're good. That's right where we need our power screw set. Nice fall day here in Old Uxbridge. Look at that pretty barn. Damn things are everywhere around here. We'll see if it'll go up the barn bank. Okay, here we go, see if it'll do this. Just off idle in fourth gear. This is asking a lot of it. Usually I do this test in third gear. We'll see how this one handles it in fourth, up the big hill. If it can do this, I know it's good. Oh, 
Oh, we're almost going to make it. Come on, old Ferg. Come on, old Ferg. It did it. Fourth gear. Unbelievable. Here's the obligatory autumn shot. Well, that'll do it for this one. Gord's old Ferguson is back amongst the living, and he's going to be really happy. I, I can't believe what I went through. When it was here a year ago, I thought I had it fixed, and then um, once he started using it, it started acting up and, and carrying on again. I think it's okay now. Lugging it around the field like that in, in fourth gear at idle, if it, if it was going to uh, foul itself up, it would have done it then. Um, so I'm going to send it back to him. It needs a new battery. He's got to go to Canadian Tire and get a new battery for it. And I'm going to get him to give it an oil change because um, after all this, the oil is all full of gas. I pulled, pulled the dipstick out of it and it, it stinks. Um, that'll help with the compression too. And running it like that will wash the cylinders and wipe out the engine. Anyway, um, this turned into a long video, didn't it? That's why I split it in two. Or I'm, I'm thinking of split it in, in two anyway. We'll find out when we do our editing. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. We all learned something in this one. And uh, I got to take off now. It's taco night, Deb says. And I never miss taco night. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Come back and see us again soon. And until then, this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long for now.